Welcome to Machine Safeguarding Training. Our machine guarding training provides learners with a comprehensive understanding of OSHA's safety requirements and how to apply them in a work environment. Learners will learn about any machine parts, functions, or processes that may be hazardous and the proper safeguards that must be put in place. In this part, we will learn where mechanical hazards occur. Mechanical hazards occur in following areas, point of operation, all parts of the machine which move, such as flywheels, pulleys, belts, couplings, chains, cranks, gears, etc. Feed mechanisms and auxiliary parts of the machine, in running nit points, we will discuss each hazard in detail in next parts. In this part, we will discuss about rotating parts and shafts hazard. Rotating parts and shafts, such as stock projecting from the chuck of a lathe, can catch hair or clothing and draw the operator in. This can seriously mangle or crush the operator. Operators can be struck by a projecting bolt or key. In this part, we will learn about nip points, or pinch points, hazard. In running nip points, or pinch points, are a special danger arising from rotating or reciprocating parts. They occur whenever machine parts move toward each other or when one part moves past a stationary object. Nip points can occur between rotating and fixed parts which create a shearing, crushing, or abrading action. Examples are, spoked handwheels or flywheels, screw conveyors, or the periphery of an abrasive wheel and an incorrectly adjusted work rest and tongue. In this part, we will learn about cutting hazards. There are many types of cutting hazards, but the three most common contact with a moving sharp-edged part, contact with a rotating part, and contact with a moving part. The first type of cutting hazard is contact with a moving sharp-edged part. This can happen when using a machine with a blade, such as a bandsaw. If the blade is not properly guarded, your clothing or skin can come into contact with the blade and be cut. The second type of cutting hazard is contact with a rotating part. This can happen when you are using a drill press or lathe. If the chuck or bit is not properly secured, your clothing or skin can come into contact with the rotating part and be cut. The third type of cutting hazard is contact with a moving part. This can happen when you are using a power saw or drill. If the blade or bit is not properly secured, your clothing or skin can come into contact with the moving part and be cut. In this part, we will learn about shearing hazard. Parts of machines that move past each other or stationary objects can cause a shear point resulting in a crushing action. Potential injuries from shear point hazards include amputation, lacerations, contusions, crushing of tissue, and broken bones. Due to the speed of mechanical parts, injury is inevitable when a body part comes in contact with a shear point. In this part, we will learn about stabbing or puncture hazards. Stabbing or puncture hazards can occur when using a machine with a pointy or sharp edge, such as a drill press. If the bit is not properly secured, your clothing or skin can come into contact with the pointy or sharp edge and be punctured. In this part, we will learn about impact hazard. All impact hazards are made possible by two factors coming together, 1, acceleration 2, impact struck by an object, caused by the an object accelerated by gravity or some other force and the resulting impact of that object on a person's body. In this part, we will learn about entanglement hazard. Entanglement and entrapment hazards are classified as caught in or caught between by OSHA. Exposures to this hazard occur when clothing, hair, jewelry, or body parts become caught within machinery and equipment that have unguarded moving parts or that are not de-energized, locked out. During maintenance, entanglement can result in serious injury or death. Injuries include scalping, amputation and degloving. In this part, we will learn about friction hazard. Friction burns can be caused by smooth parts operating at high speed. Other examples of friction or abrasion hazards include the sides of a grinding wheel, the belt of a belt sanding machine, material running onto a reel or shaft, a conveyor belt and its drums, and pulleys and fast-moving ropes or belts. In this part, we will learn about crush hazard. Crush hazards A crushing hazard is a caught-in hazard, the danger to the worker rests in being caught between two objects. Where either one or both parts may be moving, and cause injury or death by physical crushing, pulling you in or suffocation. There are many machine safeguarding methods which protects from any accident. The common machine safeguarding methods are following, guards, devices, location and distance, potential feeding, and ejection methods. We will discuss each machine safeguarding method in details in next parts. The purpose of machine guarding is to protect the machine operator.
and other employees in the work area from hazards created during the machine's normal operation. This would include hazards of concern such as ingoing nip points, rotating parts, reciprocating, transversing, and or flying chip sparks, the common machine guards are following, fixed, interlocked, adjustable, self-adjusting. We will discuss about each machine guarding method in details in next parts. In this part, we will learn about fixed guard. As its name implies, a fixed guard is a permanent part of the machine. It is not dependent upon moving parts to function. It may be constructed of sheet metal, screen, wire cloth, bars, plastic, or any other material that is substantial enough to withstand whatever impact it may receive and to endure prolonged use. In this part, we will learn about interlocking safety guard, interlocking guards, also known as barrier guards, automatically shut off or disengage the power source when the guard is open or removed. These are particularly useful in situations where operators need to be able to open the guard or access the guarded parts of the machine, such as when clearing jams. In this part, we will learn about adjustable guards. Adjustable guards, like fixed guards, are permanent, but they can be adjusted to allow the machine to handle different sizes of material. They must be manually adjusted and locked into place, so all employees who will operate adjustable guards must be trained on their use. In this part, we will discuss about present sensing devices. Present sensing devices are one of the most common safeguards for automatic feed part revolution clutch presses. They are designed to automatically stop the machine stroke if the sensing field is interrupted. Proper use of present sensing devices provides protection not only for operators but also for other employees in the area. They also minimize operator resistance to these types of safety devices due to their non-restrictive design. Present sensing devices are commonly referred to as light curtains. There are many requirements that must be met before light curtains can be installed as point of operation safeguards. In this part, we will learn about safety trip controls. Safety trip controls provide a quick means for deactivating the machine in an emergency situation. A pressure sensitive body bar, when depressed, will deactivate the machine. If the operator or anyone trips, loses balance, or is drawn toward the machine, Applying pressure to the bar will stop the operation. In this part, we will learn about pullback type safety device. Pullbacks or pullouts are used as safeguarding devices on both full and part revolution power presses. They are similar to restraints, but pullbacks are designed to pull the operator's hands away from the area of the closing dies, point of operation, during each stroke of the power press. In this part, we will discuss about restraint device. The restraint, or holdback, device utilizes cables or straps that are attached to the operator's hands and a fixed point. The cables or straps must be adjusted to let the operator's hands travel within a predetermined safe area. There is no extending or retracting action involved. In this part, we will learn about two-hand control safety device. Two-hand controls can be used as safeguarding devices in the single stoke mode of operation on part revolution clutch presses. Similar to the two-hand trip, this device keeps the operator's hands away from the point of operation during the entire machine stroke. In this part, we will learn about one methods of machine safeguarding system, which is gate. The gate is a movable barrier that protects the operator at the point of operation before the machine cycle can be started. Gates are, in many instances, designed to be operated with each machine cycle. In this part, we will discuss about distance guard. Creating buffer zones around machinery can be an effective way to ensure there is sufficient distance between the machinery and workstations. This can be done using physical barriers like distance guard. In this part, we will discuss about automatic feeding mechanism. Automatic feeds reduce the exposure of the operator during the work process, and sometimes do not require any effort by the operator after the machine is set up and running. Notice the transparent fixed enclosure guard at the danger area of this power press with an automatic feeding mechanism. In this part we will learn what is a push stick used for. Push sticks or push blocks should be used when operating standard woodworking machinery, including table saws, band saws, radial arm saws, jaw interplaners and shapers. These sticks protect the hand while allowing good hand control of the stock as it is pushed through the cutting head or blade. Thank you for attending the training.